Hey, what's going on YouTube, Alabama Reloader here. So <clears throat> today, today's video is brought to you by the cheap junk you find on Amazon. No, just kidding. But that's basically what we're doing today. I want to test out, um, you guys saw the video for this thing, the old Panku 25 to 75 by 70. Um, I'm going to put my phone on here, do the best I can to get it lined up, looking at the target, and then I'll start at 25. It'll take some monkeying around to uh, make all the adjustments on it or whatever. But that's kind of my plan. I just want to run through that. Um, that's basically how we're going to be shooting probably most of the footage today. I didn't bring my tripod. And then the second thing that I want to look at, uh, possibly if I have time, is this hunk of junk right here. The old Starbusa, <laughs> straight up Chinese camera adapter. It doesn't get any more Chinese than that right there. So, um, and so basically how this works is you, you put this over your objective lens, those nylon screws, you, you lock them down. Uh, it keeps everything semi snug and tight and in place. And then, um, and then you just line your camera up with that right there and you're able to get a decent sight picture and video through your scope. Uh, this was like 30 bucks and about the cheapest option that I could come up with uh, to try and get some scope footage. And really the only reason I wanna do that, not for these videos, it's more for hunting purposes. Like if I take my, my girls hunting, it's just, it's one of those things I want to be able to see what they're seeing through the scope. I don't want to spend, you know, a lot of money on a nicer, like LCD display. You can buy them. I think there's one that I've been looking at for a while. It's like 150 bucks or something like that, where it's the adapter goes over the scope. Then you've got like a little LCD display that it plugs into that you can see. I thought about doing that, but I wanted to try this first for $31. I think so much I paid for it. Uh, if that works good, then that'll be a good uh, setup for them while they're hunting. You know, I can see what they're seeing right there on the phone. I can record it with my phone just much easier. So without further ado, let's uh, let's get shooting. Let's get set up. Okay, guys, this is the video is probably going to come through a little bit funky, but it, it, trying to get this thing set up and on here. This is at 25 power. I'm getting the adjustment dialed in right trying to get the parallax set yeah, that's not bad that's at 25 power that's at 100 yards so i'm gonna put this thing i'm gonna crank it up to 75 and see what it looks like i'm gonna try to get the video lined up a little bit better so y'all bear with me and then we'll start shooting i'll leave it on 75 and we'll shoot Okay, guys, so here is 75 power at 100 yards. I actually had to flip the orientation of my camera, so I don't know how the video is going to come across on YouTube when I finally try to put, piece all this together. I had to put my phone vertical because if I kept it horizontal, it wanted to uh, adjust the, uh, the magnification down because of how this little adapter sits on the eyepiece. It actually would rotate it down uh, to a lower magnification. So in order to keep it at 75, I had to put my phone vertical uh, which normally I film my, all my stuff horizontally. So we're going to leave it at this, and then I'm going to get some shooting going. So I'm going to shoot. Uh, I'll start with the very bottom left green dot. I'm going to shoot the six arc. Those are quarter-inch dots. The ones above it, those are three-quarter-inch dots. I'll shoot the Henry Long Ranger at those. So, yeah, let's get it going.
<clears throat> not bad actually on the uh on the footage here on the camera uh, or at least the the quality through the uh through the phone here definitely not bad um but i'm going to uh, i'll pause in between when i'm switching from one rifle to the next i'm not going to shoot a lot of the 6r by the way that's the uh the 88 grain burger um flat base varmint bullet and that's it uh, what was it? I think that's 30.6 grains of lever evolution. If I remember correctly. Let me see. Get to my notes. Yep, that's 30.6. And that's, that's the first group of the day, first shots of the day, cold shooter, cold gun, whatever, you know. But that that's not... That's not bad at all. Really, this is going to be used as a hunting load, so that'll get the job done. All right, I'm going to swap over to the Henry, and then I'll fire back up another video. All right, you can tell. Um, so I was aiming to the top left green dot that hit high into the right. Um, this is with the Hornady 129 grain interlock, the flat base. So I don't really want to make an adjustment. I'm hoping I don't hit any higher than that, but I really don't want to make a scope adjustment until after I shoot these three shots. All right, not exactly the start I was looking for. Uh, not, I mean, not bad, not terrible by any means. Again, cold gun, um, first three shots of the day. That is, uh, like I said, the Hornady 129. We'll go over all these numbers when we get back. I, this is mostly just to test out this spotting scope uh, and what it would look like, you know, on 75 power. This is at 100 yards, you know, and, and all that. So it's really, uh, we'll go over all the, the data you know, and the numbers and every, all that fun stuff when we get back to the house. But, all right, well, I'm going to I'm gonna run down to the target. I'm going to measure these, and then uh, I've got to give this Henry a little bit of time to cool off and also the, the 6 arc. So 
we'll fire back up a uh, another video here in a second all right guys so <clears throat> there's a few folks down there at the pistol the steel bays down there uh, but other than that i'm the only person over here on the rifle side so now i'm going to switch to so i'm back to shooting the six arc i'll be shooting the bottom right hand green dot the quarter inch green dot down at the bottom on the right uh, but i'm trying to take velocity data this time so uh so we'll see what the group looks like i got the magneto speed sporter um all mounted up and ready to go so let's see what uh, see what kind of velocities we get with these 88 grain burgers
All right, I shot those last three fairly quickly just because I completely forgot that I was supposed to take my spacer out of my uh, my sporter chronograph because I in a previous video, if you guys would go back and watch some of my six arc videos, I actually showed where I had to remove the spacer completely uh, from the bayonet and I basically shimmed it up with three pieces of like ratchet strap, very thin ratchet strap because I couldn't get the velocities to read. And I started off with my spacer in there and the ratchet straps because I, I couldn't remember which. I was like, did I need all of that? So I fired first shot, didn't even register. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So, uh, I, I changed it up, but I still, I think I took the, the ratchet straps out. So then it was just a spacer and I still didn't register the second shot. So that's why it took so long between the second and third shot. Cause then I finally remembered, oh yeah, I need to remove the spacer altogether, put the three pieces of ratchet strap in there. And so I was able to register those last three shots. And those were 28, 26, 28, 30 and 28, 44. Um, not bad for the 88 grain burger coming out of this short barrel so that's with 30.6 grains of lever evolution that is a pretty healthy charge of that so all right now we're going to switch over to the henry all right now we're going to shoot the henry and i'm actually i'm still not going to make a scope adjustment i loaded up some 140 grain spear hot cores as well this is with a line 4000 uh mr and so I'm going to be shooting the orange dots now. So I'll shoot the one on the left and see where it goes, see what our point of uh, impact looks like relative to the 129s. So check it out. thought that might be the case which is why I didn't want to make a scope adjustment just yet so all right let's give it a few seconds this thin barrel that's the only downside about trying to work up loads for you know hunting rifles is typically they have pretty thin barrels and it just you have to try your best to let them cool off as much as you can But when you're filming also, we're not gonna wait around all day. So, all right, shoot a couple more.
All right, that might be one just to call it done on. Not too bad. That's uh, one of the best three shot groups I've gotten out of this Henry so far. I've been testing bullet powder combinations. So uh, this one seems to be just a little bit more picky um, about what you throw through it so far. I'm gonna shoot the rest of those 129s. I'm not gonna do the rest of this stuff on camera. Um, but what I am gonna do is we're gonna run down, I'm gonna run all the way down to the, uh, the end of the line here and we're gonna send those burgers out at 380 uh, in the six arc and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll film that. So, all right, y'all hang on. All right, <clears throat> all right guys, so I just plugged in some numbers. Looks like we gotta go up about two mils. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna make an adjustment. This target is out almost at 400 yards. Still got it on uh, 75 power on our spotting scope. So let's just see what we can do with those burgers. All right, not bad overall. Yeah, pretty good stuff. All right, guys, we'll uh, we'll see y'all back at the house. All right, y'all, this is gonna be a real quick wrap up <clears throat> to the end of this video. I've, I've pieced everything together. It's gonna be a long enough video as it is with the range footage, but I will come back. I'll do a follow up video uh, for the spotting scope itself. This is just gonna be kind of like a results. Um, uh, conclusion pretty much and path forward uh, for the 6.5 Creedmoor primarily. Um, it'll be for working up my dad's hunting load in his Henry Long Ranger. Um, I didn't even shoot, I didn't even finish shooting the 129 grain uh, interlock because the 140 hot core shot so well with Alliant Power Pro 4000 MR on the bottom end of our charge weights that we were testing. Now, once we got up really high on our charge weights plus the barrel was really hot uh toward these last two groups especially this last group the third one's actually hit right up here uh, on the target um it opened up quite a bit obviously um but these first three groups down here on the on the lower end of our our charge weight range uh 42 and a half 42.8 and 43.1 uh, i mean that's that's really good results that you do have a slight point of impact shift between all three of those charge weights point of impact uh, point of aim obviously is the orange dot point of impact it, it shifted around a little bit uh, but this 
tells me essentially that we're on the right track with this bullet powder combination, right? This is the first time I've ever used uh, 4000 MR and it's, it, it, yeah, it definitely proved that it is a good powder, at least for this combination. In this rifle, it seems like it's gonna, like this bullet powder combination. So we're not really gonna mess around with it too much. We're gonna run with uh, 42.5 is probably what we're gonna run with and do some uh, testing you know, playing around with seating depth and that kind of thing and just finalizing that load, you know, load up 20 rounds, give it to my dad, he'll have it for hunting season and he's good to go, right? Um, and the reason I didn't want to fool with the 129s anymore uh, is just really because, you know, we get, we're carrying more mass with the 140. Uh, we've got decent velocity based on the manual. I have to, I'll have to validate that, but uh, 4000 MR is one of the better velocity powders that Spear has load data for. So we're already, um, you know, probably pushing some decent velocity with this weight of a bullet. And so it's gonna do a great job no matter what he's hunting, deer, hog, doesn't matter. Uh, he'll be able to get the job done. So that's it. That's where we're gonna leave it. So you guys, don't forget, go pick up your ticket for the Friends of the NRA um, event coming up August 18th, five o'clock, Campus 805 in Huntsville, Alabama. It's gonna be an awesome time. I'm looking forward to the dinner. I'm looking forward to all the prizes that are going to be given away. Just coming together, hanging out, spending time with like-minded people with the focus on getting youth involved in shooting sports and outdoors. Get them off those devices. Get them in, into the outdoors. That's what it's geared toward. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Y'all go check that out. Go ahead and buy you a ticket now that way because once we sell, uh, we only have a certain amount we can sell. Once we sell, we're done. Um, so you guys go uh, get you one now. Make sure you don't miss out on that event. Looking forward to it. So, And don't forget, make sure you guys are going and visiting Mr. Big Guns over in Huntsville. Uh, that's my number one place locally to shop. Uh, love what Matt and those guys do down there. All the support that they've given me and just their customer service in general. Top notch. You're not going to find a better place to shop locally for sure. Uh, and then they do have a website, so if you're not local to Huntsville, Alabama, you can definitely order stuff through their website. And then also another place that I highly recommend, a couple of places, Midway Pistol and Ammo out in Gurley, Alabama. That's another great uh, spot to stop by and see what all they have going on. But then also Duck Creek Sporting Goods out in Colorado, Denny McDaniels out there. Great dude. Um, just really, really awesome uh, place. You can find some find some really good deals on some of the stuff that he comes up with. It's, it's pretty cool, some of the the uh, the bullets and, and reloading equipment that he's able to come up with because he purchases a lot of stuff from estate sales also. So it's just really neat to see uh, what you can find over there. And he's he's got a lot of brass in stock if you're looking for some. I just picked up some 350 Legend brass from him. Uh, he had it at the best price that I'd seen anybody listed at. So you guys go check uh, check him out. And that's it. Y'all stay tuned for more videos uh, of the actual gear that we use, the, the spotting scope and all that stuff for this video. And we'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.